everyone that's listening. We welcome each and every one of you all that's in the house tonight. Thank you for not counting it robbery to come out and spend a, uh, to hear a mighty word from God, to experience a mighty move of God. So we thank you, God, for allowing us to be in the house, God. For you say it, forsake not the assembling together and other brethren, God. So we say thank you tonight, God, for gracing us. Thank you for bringing us through the day, God, and allowing us to be able to come together to worship, allowing us to be able to come together in fellowship, allowing us to be able to to come together and lift up your name, God, for you alone is worthy of all the praise. So we give you the praise, we give you the glory, and we give you the honor tonight, God. We say thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We give you the glory. We give you the honor, and we give you the honor. Oh, come on in. Let's just worship the Lord tonight. Let's just worship the Lord. I don't know what you came in with, but I need. I know that some of us came in heavy. The devil, we already know, done tried to stop the word from going forth. But the devil doesn't win. The, the word I heard today and the song I heard today is that the devil is defeated. The devil is defeated. God reigns. God is sovereign. God got the victory. He already has won the battle. So I say thank you, Lord, today. I say thank you, God, and we just magnify you and we bless your holy name. I'm gonna do. I'm just going to sing this real quick little verse because this has been in my heart all day today. And I thank God for the, the, the word of the Lord God Almighty. He said, make a joyful noise. For some, it might be noise to them. But to God, it's a sweet melody because I'm singing from my heart. God said, make a joyful noise unto him. We've just blessed the Lord tonight. Everyone know the song, I love you, Jesus. Everyone knows the song, I love you, Jesus. So let's just go ahead and sing a few verses of I love me some Jesus. And, and then we're going to get the man of God because we want the word of the Lord God Almighty to come forth. I mean, we don't want him to have to be rushed with the word tonight. So just come on and just, just bless the name of the Lord tonight. And the song, as I said, we're going to just sing a quick verse of I love me, Je I love you, Jesus. And then after that, we're going to get the mighty man of God up. Um, I am Pastor Dr. Gwen Gibbs, and my awesome husband is Pastor Dr. Frederick Gibbs. So we give God all the praise, and we give him all the honor, for he is worthy. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. Lord, I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, sing with me, you, with me, you all. I love you. Everybody can tell the Lord that they love him. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you care for me. In such a special way, that's why I praise you. Mm. I lift my hands and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart, my mind, yes, Lord, my soul belongs to you. Pay the price for me, yes, God, way back on Calvary. That's why I praise you. I lift you up, Lord, I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. 
one more time. Let's just tell the Lord we love him. And then we get the man of God up. I love you. I love you. Yes, Lord. Because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. Lord, I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Amen, amen. I love me some Jesus. I don't know about you all, but we bringing the mighty man of God up for a mighty word from the Lord God Almighty. God bless you. Let everybody say amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. Dr. Gills did something tonight I ain't seen in a long time. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Didn't she sing? Amen. Almost, almost say, Lord, God, Jesus, she, she sung that. Father, God, we thank you tonight, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for being live in Jacksonville, Florida tonight, God. We thank you, God, for Jesus dying for us, God. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. We praise you, Lord, for what you're doing right now, God, what you has done and what you will do. Lord, we, we thank you tonight. We ask you, God, for, for forgive us for all our sins. And, Lord, intervene tonight, Lord, with a mighty word that we leave here tonight blessed and better than what we came. In Jesus' name, amen. If you got your Bibles, I'm going to go straight into the word tonight. I'm going to go straight into the word because it's, uh, it, it's, to me, it's a right now word. It's a right now word, and I, I just want to go into it tonight. Um, the scripture for tonight, First um, Kings 17 and 1. Have it up on the screen. Okay. First Kings 17 and 1. And I, I just want to read one little couple words. First Kings 17 and 1. If you got it, say amen. I'm glad everybody came out tonight. Those who are watching around the world, I want to thank you. Joining in tonight. And I believe God got a word for us tonight. I believe he got a word. I believe he got a word. And we was having te technical difficulties. And now I see sometime when God gives you something, he, he, do he doesn't explain it in full. He gives you part of it. And then as time goes on, you'll understand the reason for the, what he said. Well, tonight, if you look up on the screen, you'll see 1 Kings 17 and 1. And when God was downloading the word in my spirit, around Wednesday, Thursday of the week, last week, this is exactly what I was going to preach on. But as you, as you see, as I go on, this is not what I'm going to preach on tonight. So I told people who put the scriptures up, just go ahead and put 1 Kings 17 and 1. But my text, what I'm going to talk about tonight, is in my notes, at the bottom of my notes, pertaining to 1 Kings 17 and 1, Matthew 4 and 4, Matthew 4 and 7, and Matthew 4 and 10. But the Spirit came to me around Sunday morning, but it came to me about Thursday. See, so I want you to preach the bottom part of your message first. So that's why I didn't change the title of it. And, and, and the title of the message was going to be Applying God's Word. Applying God's Word. But at the bottom of the message, in my notes, God said, I want you to speak that first. 
because it's impossible for my people to apply the word when they don't know who they are. So tonight, I'm not going to change the title, but that's not where I'm coming from, 1 Kings 17 and 1. I just want to let you know. I won't be coming from Matthew 4 and 4, 4 and 7, or 4 and 10. I remember when I was a young man coming up, we had a missionary named Evangelist Smith. She said, you will find me somewhere between Genesis and Revelation. So this word is going to be somewhere between Genesis and Revelation. And if, I, um, and if you want to use your own subject tonight, it would be something like, you need to know who you are. You, you need to know who you are. Because you cannot apply God's word if you don't know who you are. And, and as I go, you, you'll, understand, you'll understand it clear as I go through. So tonight, I, I want to um, regress and talk about what we preached about last week to give a review. And it'll come at a time what I'm talking about tonight. Can y'all hear me out there? Okay. Now, last week we talked about from a subject not last week, the last time I preached, because how we have it now, I preach a week, Dr. Graham preach a week, I preach a week. So the message that I was going to preach tonight, applying God's word, you may not see that until you come back again, okay? And, and it won't be next week, because Dr. Graham will be preaching. So the next time I preach, 1 Kings 17 and 1, Matthew 4 and 4, Matthew 4 and 7, Matthew 4 and 10, I'm going to let you know it'll be the subject. Applying God's word. Applying God's word. But last time I was here preaching, I talked about faith for the middle. Everybody remember that? Faith for the middle. And I told you that it's not about your faith, but it's your faith in God that's going to get you through the middle. I'm, I'm going to give you a review because it's going to tie into what I'm talking about tonight. God, he gives you a beginning. And he lets you see the end. But the problem we have is the middle. And then I gave you some people who, who, who God told, like he told Abraham, I want you to go to, to, to Canaan. But he didn't give him any plans in the middle. He told David, I want, I want you, will be, you will be the next king. But he didn't tell David he had to kill Goliath. He didn't tell David about the middle. The beginning and the ending. And then I gave you five things, I believe, five things that we talked about how to get through the middle. You may have more, but I'm going to tell you the five things God gave me. The first one we talked about was the word. Then we, from the word, we went to the promise. And promise give you faith. And from faith, you have a hope and an expectation to get through the end. Now, let me break down those five things right quick. I'm going to get to my message. We're going to be short and to the point, and then... Uh, I, those is, I'm going to talk about four things tonight, right, right after I finish the middle. And those four things you really want to hear. Because those four things is the reason why people are not coming to church. It's the reason why people are leaving the church. And it's the reason why you have a form of godliness in the church. Uh, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost coming on me right now, so let me just go ahead and finish the five right through here. Uh, and let's talk about the word for a minute. Somebody say the word. Now, Daniel said, Daniel in 10 and 12, when he had prayed in the 10th chapter of Daniel, and the angel said something that, 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 that caught my attention. He said, I came, Daniel, from the first day you prayed, I heard, God heard you. The first day you prayed, I heard you. And I'm here now for your word. That's the only reason I came, Daniel. I didn't, came, I didn't come because the choir was here. I didn't come because you have musicians. I didn't come because you sound good on the microphone. I came because of your word. Your word brought me here. Then the promises of God. The promises of God, 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, it says all the promises of God are yes and amen. When you go look up the word amen, it means so let it be. If God said it, it's going to happen. Matter of fact, it's already happened. When God told Abraham that Sarah was going to have a baby, she was pregnant already. It took nine months for it to come to fruition. Now, we got the word. Somebody say the word. And then from the word, we got a promise. God promised is his word. 
If God tell you it's going to happen, it's already happened. I told you last time I was here, God live outside of time and space. Uh, we look at Jesus dying on the cross 2,000 years ago. But I can show you in Revelation, Jesus died before the foundation of the world. You, God don't look at it the way we look. So you got the word. And from the word, you got the promise. And promise, you got faith. Paul picks it up in Galatians 2 and 20. He said, the faith, he said, when Christ died, I died. And the faith that I have now is in Christ Jesus. It's not my faith. So if you're going to get through the middle, you can't have your faith. Then the hope and expectation. Okay, I, I had to go back and do some homework on that. So I, I just want to make sure you know what I was talking about last week, how to get through the middle. The word, promises, faith, and have an expectation and hope. That's how you get through the middle. Then I was going to come back. God gave me a good word. He downloaded. Every morning I get up and I go in a certain direction. And usually when I make a left turn, I have to go about 10 miles. My wife knows what I'm talking about. And for some reason, at every red light, you can go in my car and see. I got stuff scribbled up, scrabble all down. I got napkins, paper towels on books where God just be loading it into my spirit every morning going and coming back so when I put the message together that God gave me I came up with a title applying God's word I was going to talk about the first part of the word the promise the faith and hope and expectation I was just going to talk about the word applying the word so I thought I had the message all together but well, around Wednesday or Thursday, it came to me and said, in your notes, I want you to preach the bottom part first. I had a title, subject, everything. I was going to show you how Jesus, Matthew 4, chapter, how he spoke the word. Matthew 4 and 4. Matthew 4 and 7. Matthew 4 and 10. Then I was going to show you how Elijah, he stood and said, at my word, it was not rain. But then God, I see why now. I see why now he, he told me to preach what I'm going to preach tonight first. But when he first told me Wednesday or Thursday, I was kind of hesitant about doing it. And then he said, how can they apply the word when they don't know who they are? I want my people to know who they are. And so Sunday came around, and I got my confirmation. When servant mercy were preaching, and he said uh, one word, a couple words that, that trigger my spirit. And he said that we done danced to people enough. Ever since I was a child in church, I don't want to call it a denomination. But uh, when I was a child, from the minute I went to church, we stayed all day. We ran around the church and praised God. But the only problem with that was when I left the church, I couldn't even tell you what the man preached about. And so God is telling me in my spirit that in this season coming up, in order to get what God got for you, you need to know who you are. And the only way you're going to know who you are, I feel God right now. Just stay with me. I'm going to just take you through four things. And like I said earlier, these four things here is one of the reasons why people are not in church. It's another reason why people are leaving the church. And it's a reason why people have a form of godliness in the church. And, and uh, when he was talking about the church, it came to me from a, from a great man who passed, passed away, the great Martin Luther King. He said, basically, in, in America, there are two types of church, churches. He said, one you have where you go and you get three points in a poem. 
you get a lot of knowledge. But you leave there with no power. And he said the other kind of church is when you go. They do a whole lot of dancing. Shouting and running around the church. But they leave with no knowledge. So, so you got on one hand, you got a lot of knowledge with no revelation. And on the other hand, you got a lot of dancing and, 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 and nice sermons with no knowledge. So I said, God, what you want me to do? And then God, he led me to, in my mind, Apostle Paul. It's in one of the books I wrote. And, and I don't like to talk about another preacher to a preacher. But if the truth be known, there's two people I know. They only had one message. And Paul tells you in the, in, the, in the Bible, I only preach Jesus Christ. He wrote 13 books of the Bible. And the other man I like to talk about is Billy Graham. Billy Graham only had one message, and that was Jesus Christ. And those two men alone have brought more people to Jesus than anybody else on the face of the earth. Preaching one message. They, 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 they didn't try to give you three poems in a poem. They didn't try to preach a fancy sermon to, make, to entice the crowd. They preached Jesus Christ. And, and am I going around the world? God has blessed me. I've been on five different continents. I've seen people get out of wheelchairs. I've seen demons talk out of people. I've seen miracles that, that the human mind wouldn't even believe. And I said, God, what's going on? Why here in America? And the problem, I'm trying to hold on. The problem is because my people don't know who they are. They shouting and jumping around the church on Sunday. And Monday morning, getting defeated. And they broke uh, uh, down. Can't fight the devil off. The enemy, the enemy main concern is try to get you alone. He, he's trying to take what Jesus has already done and put it on you. He, he's trying to make you feel like, let me give you an example. You, you saved. You came to the altar or wherever you got saved at. You save. But then Satan appeared in your mind that Jesus is out there. So then you start trying to work your way to Jesus. But my Bible don't tell me that. My Bible says in, 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 in Ephesians 1, 22 and 23, when you got Jesus, he came in inside of you, the fullness of him. Colossians 2 and 10 say, when you receive Jesus, you are complete in him. It's not that I get saved and the goalposts are here and I start working my way to Jesus. No, when you get saved, Jesus come in you and him and you start walking it together. And, and that's a problem. Well, I couldn't preach this message tonight, but I apply the word. Because how can you apply the word when you don't know who you are? How can you see people, uh, oh, God, help me. I'm not a bit man. But if you call some Christians in here and you tell them, I got a headache, oh, they'll be quick to lay hands on you because they believe they can do it. But if you tell them, oh, I got coronavirus or I got sugar or I got cancer, They'll be very hesitant in praying. And the reason why they won't pray is because deep down, they do not know who they are. Yeah. Satan working on you. He's telling you, you got to do this and that. Oh. And the other place, sometimes, is in the church. 
I ain't gonna get no. I know I ain't gonna get too many amens in here tonight. I ain't gonna get too many amens in here. Sometimes it's a church. You can't find nowhere in the Bible, nowhere, where Jesus ever rebuked their sinner. Never. You can't show me nowhere in the Bible he, Jesus ever rebuked a sinner. The problem he had problems with are church folks. Pharisees, Sadducees, and the scribes. <laughs> God help me tonight. They came to Jesus with their legalism, their rituals, and tradition. He tells them in Mark 7 and 13. It is because of your rituals, your tradition, your legalism that make the power of God of no effect. That's why you don't see people getting out of wheelchairs. That's why you don't see the dead being raised. That's why people come to church on Sunday and go home the same way, week after week after week. And I, I can kind of understand now why God, he took me while I was in the army and he put me on a two-year job and he kept me out there for 10 years as a drill sergeant in a two-year job. He said, I'm going to make you bold. I want you to speak. And, and not only that, I, I ran from the, the Lord. I got out of the military, tried to pacify God like Saul did. Went out and got me a master's degree and, and, and a doctor, I mean, a master's degree at first and, 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 a, and a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in theology. Got back in the military thinking that would pacify God. Around 2007, I heard the word again. Say, I want you in Jacksonville, Florida. And me being somewhat defiant, I ain't going. I'm not going. All of a sudden, the word came again. Say, I want you in Jacksonville, Florida. In 2000, and, and I wrote a book about it in 2012. And everything in that book came to fruition within three years. And one part of the book, now, there is no way for me to know what would happen in 2015 that was written in 2012. In 2012, in the book, I tell you about Jacksonville. In the book, I tell you I'm going to lose it all. I had a nice car, I always had nice cars, money, big house, pool, you name it, I had it. I lost it all. You can go Google this. In October of 2015, I was doing good, and a flood came to South Carolina. I lost everything. Called my brother, was going to come down here, but Amtrak wasn't running. I had to wait three days to get here. That's in another book I wrote. And everything that God promised me has come to fruition. That's why I can speak the word. Because I'm already rich. I'm already blessed. And that's why I'm not tied to nothing. I'm not tied to a man. I'm not tied to a denomination. He says, you preach, I'll bless you. I'm not trying to brag, but 1 Corinthians 1 and 31 tells me, boast in God. I can look at my window and look to the right. And there's a man on five gas stations, multi-million. I look to my left, and there was a commander of Mayport beside my house. The only one on the, on the street who got a pool. I said, Lord, and the sad thing about it, he said, the way I'm going to do it, the way I'm going to do it, they going to know I did it. When I got here, with six degrees, stay with me. I'm going to get to my four points. With six degrees, he said, the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to bless you. They know it's me. Went to the medical facility. They put me in the lowest pen department there. Pushing two trash cans, driving a Maserati. My wife wanted, wanted a Mercedes. I went down to the dealership, $100,000 car. She wanted purple inside. She got it. And I'm not just talking about material blessing. I'm talking about the reason you don't have because you don't know who you are. It's time out. Like when, when, when Mercer said that, something came in my spirit. My spirit resonated. 
I begin to feel like Gideon in the sixth chapter. I feel God over me right now. I'm trying to get to these four points. Gideon in the sixth chapter. He said, where are the miracles y'all told us about? Where are the blessings you told me about? It seems like all the blessings being around the pulpit. If I'm a child, I will puzzle it in my mind. You telling me I'm gonna be blessed. Blessed. It seems like all the blessings are up here. God wants everybody blessed. Ooh. I feel God in here. I'm trying to get to these four points. Are y'all still with me? If you still with me, say amen. So so now Gideon, he said, ask a question like I asked. When God first called me to preach, over 30 years, I'm not going. But all I hear is somebody saying, what's going to happen? You're going to have to prove it to me. The same way Gideon got there, I said, Lord, if you want me to go to Jacksonville or you want me to do this, you're going to have to prove it to me. That's how defined I became. Because for all my life, I was in church. This kind of church and that kind of church. One who gave you the word and one who danced all day long. Ah, all day. Oh, you can holler on a microphone. That is not the anointing. That don't mean it's not the anointing, but that don't mean it is anointing either. Because when Elijah, that man we just talked about, he, he didn't have no cry when he was up there. He didn't have no position when he was up there. He spoke the word. And when Jesus was up on the mountain with Satan, he ain't had time to go get no choir, time to go get no preacher. He spoke the word. When my wife wanted a new Mercedes, I spoke the word. Went to the house, big house, pool. I said, man, I ain't going no further. I'm finished right here. That's what you want. That's what you get. You got to know how to apply the word. But you can't apply the word unless you know these four things. I'm getting ready to talk about them. How much time I got, baby? You need to know these four things. See? Oh, God, help me. These four things was at the, the, the bottom of my page. And I was kind of reluctant about preaching them because I didn't know how it would go over. But God, he, he began to remind me about something. And I don't have any witnesses in here but Dr. Gibbs. We went to the prison a couple years back. We, we have a prison ministry. And I was teaching the people about faith. And they was going home left and right. They was going home left and right. They was going home. It was so many miracles that they even started a Facebook at the prison, a, a faith book. And one Tuesday night, a night back like this, I told Dr. Gwen to let me in the back seat. And from the prison to Jacksonville is about an hour drive. From the prison to Jacksonville is about one hour drive. And God, he beat me down. I mean, beat me down with, 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 with the word all the way. I sent you to the prison to tell them about me. Yeah, they going home. They doing this and they doing that. But do, do they know who I am? And I made God a vow. If you, if you forgive me for this, I will never do it again. Never. So when I preach, I don't preach for formality. I don't preach to be seen. I call, I call it like it is. And tonight, I want to, before I sit down, now I'm going to give you four things. There are a lot more. There's a lot more of them. But these are four things that I think everybody can resonate with. And the first one I want to talk about. Let me get my notes. I got to go to the back and pull them to the front. Because like I said, they was in the back. Are y'all still with me? See, I got to go to the back of my notes. He wanted me to preach that first. So I got to go to the back. Now, here we go. The last three pages. Are y'all still with me? Are y'all getting something out of it? Do you want to know who you are in Christ Jesus? You can't apply the word until you know who you are. Let me just teach that to you. That's fair. Once you get this in your system, you may be already there. As far as I'm concerned, you may be already speaking the word. You may be already arrived. I'm just telling you what God told me. 
Because these four things hit me also. And if you're not careful, Satan will use them on you while you're in the middle. Now, let's talk about four things. And like I said, there could be a lot more. There could be a lot more. Uh, the first one I want to talk about tonight is righteousness. Righteousness. Somebody say righteousness. righteousness. See, the church don't fully understand what the word righteousness means. Let me kind of demonstrate it to you. When we was when I was a drill sergeant, we, we, we had a saying, you can do it by the numbers or, or you can demonstrate it. So I'm going to demonstrate. A right standing only means I'm standing before God right. I'm in right standing with God based on what Jesus did. Are you still with me? Now, I'm saved. The moment I got saved, the very moment I got saved, Jesus came inside of me. Are you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you with me? This may sound very childish and, 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 and basic and elementary, but you'll be surprised how many people don't even understand what I'm talking about right now. They say and don't know they're righteous. See, the devil doesn't care about you saying you saved. The devil doesn't care about you shouting around the church. The devil doesn't care about how good you can sing. But he'll fight you tooth and nail. When you say you're righteous, let me go ahead a little deeper in righteous. See, you are not righteous. This is the reason why he don't want you to know you're righteous. <laughs> see, see, you are not righteous based on what you did. You are not righteous based on what you're doing now. You are not righteous based on what you will do. Second Corinthians 5, you might want to write that one down. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 say God declared us righteous based on what Jesus did on the cross. You are not righteous based on what you did. So I guarantee you, if I went to the inner church in, in Jacksonville tonight, where it's raining tonight, when it's dry up, and I stand in front of the church, and as they come out of the church, I ask him, tell me how you know you're righteous. Uh, I'm, willing, I'm willing to guarantee that I have a list. It goes something like this. It probably says, well, I'm righteous because I go to church. I wear a black suit on, on communion. I don't drink. I don't dip or chew. And I don't mess with anybody who do. I don't go to no nightclubs. I don't bite, bite. I don't do none of that stuff. You know, I don't gamble, midnight ramble. I don't do any of those things. They ain't going to give you a list. I pay my tithe. I give an offering. Uh, what else? What else? And I go, I go to the, the nursing home. I give food to their pope. They're going to give you a list of what they did. <laughs> all those things are good. But all those things do not make you righteous. Those things are a byproduct of you already being righteous. <laughs> Let me say it again. Those things do not make you righteous. They are a byproduct of you already being righteous. When you're righteous, you should pay your tithe. You should help the poor. But helping the poor don't make you righteous. Everybody understand? Everybody understand what I'm saying? Just because I paid my tithe don't make me righteous. But being righteous, I'll make you pay your tithe. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Uh, are, 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 are you with me? I, I need somebody to say amen right through here. I need somebody to talk to me right through here. Now, now, I'm going to deal with this one for a, a couple more. Now, now, the problem is, if you're not careful, the devil will take you not knowing you're righteous and destroy you. You might want to listen to this. You might want to listen to this here. The devil will take you not knowing you're righteous and destroy you. Let me break it down to you. So, so all of a sudden, you got a list. And then you thinking that because I read my Bible four times this week. Or I may read it five, I may have read it five times this week. He then will tell you what well, Sister Jones read it six times. So then you try to start reading it six times. 
Then he would tell you, Brother Ed read, read it nine times. So you can never catch up to what he's doing in your mind. All those things do not make you righteous. You are declared righteous. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. I'm going real brief through, the, through these, but I'm praying to God that one day I can sit in here for about two weeks and just break it down. Because God people do not know who they are. And that's the number one reason why you, you don't see people laying hands on the sick. You don't see the dead being raised. That's why you're still broke. Because you don't know who you are. Let me say one more thing about righteous. And I'm going to have time to finish the other three. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. In Romans, it says, Romans 5 and 17. It says, those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life. The reason you don't reign in the devil reigning over you because you don't know you're righteous. And every time you make a mistake, so one day you're in the church. When I was coming, I got saved every Sunday. Every Sunday, I, for, for the older people who know what I'm talking about in here, I wore out a pair of dungarees every Sunday going to church. Every Sunday I'm on the altar. I believe personally, not that you're, I'm, I'm older, older than y'all, but you remember them days? Every Sunday, tearing. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, every Sunday. When you're already saved, you're already righteous, you're already filled with the Holy Ghost. You, you are as righteous as you ever going to be. The problem is, they confuse righteousness. You want to you get this. They confuse righteousness with spiritual maturity. Okay, they, they, they ain't got that. They, they, they ain't get that. God, I'm going to preach this. I'm, I'm going to give a two-week class. I'm going to ask the bishop. I, I just want to give a two-week class on this. Because cause the people don't know who they are. They confuse righteousness with spiritual maturity. You can be righteous and weak as pond water. Let me break, it, break that down to you. I'm righteous, but I may be struggling in the area. But I'm righteous. Because the next thing I tell you about, I'll give you the answer to what you're thinking about in your mind. Let's move to the second thing. Spirit, soul, and body. Somebody say spirit, soul, and body. Now, in Thessalonians, Paul was talking about your spirit, soul, and body. See, you're not a human being. You are a spirit being. You are a spirit that have a soul, and they both live in your body. I don't want to confuse nobody. You are a spirit that have a soul, and they live in your body. The spirit man inside of you goes to God, always go to God. The soul is your corner realm, what you can see, touch, taste, feel. It always points towards what it can see. And they're always in contrary to each other. That's why it says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now, which one ever is stronger, which one you feed the most, that's the way your body goes. If your spirit is strong, and your mind tell you, let's go have a drink. You ain't going to drink because your spirit man came up. Now, let, let, me, let me help you out for, for a couple of seconds. Here. When I told you righteous, when you got saved, you might want to get this. You might want to get this. You might want to get this. When you got saved, the only part of you that got saved was your spirit man. Your spirit man saved. Your soul is getting saved. And you will have a glorified body one day. Your spirit man is saved. Your soul is getting saved. And your body, you'll get a glorified body. Now, when you got saved, the only part of you that got saved was your spirit. And Paul says in Ephesians 1, 13 and 14, your spirit man is sealed until the day of redemption. Satan cannot touch your soul. So now, let's say you made a mistake. 
Satan come whispering in your ear. You, you know you done bite slide. You know you done, you know you done messed up, right? You, you know you done messed up. But your spirit, man, is perfect. You still righteous. Now, let's, let's move on. Let's move on. I'm going to come back one day, and we're going to break these down, plus some more, plus some more. The other thing I want to talk to you about, we talked about, first of all, we talked about right standing. We talked about spirit, soul, and body. This, this is one scripture right here that almost ran me crazy. And I heard Joseph Prince from, from saw him at the Bishop T.D. Jakes conference. He said, this scripture right here almost ran him crazy. That's why I want to share it with you tonight. Because you got a lot of young people who are saved. And but once they hear this scripture, they get totally confused. Totally confused. And that scripture is 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. I know you heard the scripture before where you said, once you get in Christ, you're a new creature. You heard that before. All things are new. Well, let me tell you something. In the old moment, I went down in the water and my hands were new. I went in the water and my feet was too. Well, let me tell you, Grandma, something. That's a lie. That's a lie. When you went in the water, you came out the same way. The only thing changed about you was your spirit man. That's the only part about you got saved was your spirit man. You got the same hands that you had when you got saved. So now, all of a sudden, you got this 15-year-old come to the altar. You got a 15-year-old come to the altar. And somebody sitting in church with legalism, tradition, and rituals tell him all things are new. So this young 15-year-old, he's saved. And the next day he go to school and curse. Now the church got him thinking he ain't saved. That is not true. He is saved. His spirit man saved. His soul is getting saved. And his body getting a glorified body. He only saving his spirit. And they confuse, they confuse salvation with spiritual maturity. And I'm going to go ahead to the last one. And I'm going to close it out. Dr. Gibbs, you can go ahead and get ready. The, the last scripture I want to talk about is 1 John 4 and 17. It says, as he is, so are we in this world. Now, when I first heard that, I said, ain't no way I'm like Jesus. In your spirit, man, you are. In your spirit, man, you are perfect. And the reason why, with that mentality, because you don't know who you are, you will never become a Hebrew 4 and 16 person. Where it said, come boldly to the throne. That's the reason why, because you sneak up to the throne, because you don't know who you are. You come looking at God as if he's, you know, like, I did, I paid my tithe. I did this, I did that, so I know God going to bless me. But what about when you didn't do that? So you basing what you're getting from God on what you did or didn't do. And as long as you stay in that cycle, you'll never get what God really wants you to have because you don't know who you are. Come and get this microphone. Come, come on up. Come on up. Man, don't leave us like that, uh, Pastor. <laughs> we want to know more about who we are. When God finished, amen, that's amen. Enough. That's we, a, we he said that's time. enough. We, we I, ooh, Lord, I'm, I'm some like, more. we done? Be some more. We done. Amen. That's one thing I love about my husband. When he hear God speak, I don't care what, what we have planned, he go according to what the word of the Lord God Almighty has told and has spoken to him to say. So he said, we were done, we were done. So, Father, we thank you right now for this word, God. We thank you tonight, God, that we 
have applied the word, God, and that we know who we are right now, Father God. Thank you for the mighty man of God pouring out to us tonight, God. Thank you for him reminding us that we must first know who we know are. Know who you are. Know who we are in Jesus' name. And in order to know who we are, we have to get in and apply the word of the Lord God Almighty. So we thank you, God, right now for the word that came forth with power, with might, and with clarity, God. We thank you right now, and we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory, and we give you all the honor. Um, oh, God bless you all. You done? No, you you done? Oh, okay, well, God bless the man. Thank you for a mighty word of God. Oh, my goodness. The power of the Lord God Almighty. I'm telling you, when you are obedient um, to everything that the Lord God Almighty t tells you, to do it might not look right in the eyes of some and and like when he said we have in church not as usual it is not church as usual I'm telling you um I, I just love how God just showing up and showing out he doing what he um what only he can do so I give God all the praise I give him all the glory and I give him all the honor and we don't want to take it for granted because our sole purpose for coming out each and every Tuesday at 7 p.m so if you are in Jackson please make sure you mark your calendar set your alarm clock at six o'clock next Tuesday you want to be in the house because he said I might be bringing the word next week but um I think it might be him because we need to hear some more of that but we're gonna see how the Lord God Almighty works and what he does but regardless next Tuesday at 7 p.m you want to be in the house and we don't take it for granted whether you are in the house or out the house that everyone has accepted Jesus. In order for you to know who you are, you have to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So we don't take it for granted if you are today have not accepted Jesus. God said it's so simple that he, it, it, it doesn't cost you anything but for you to open up your mouth, believe, and declare what his word says. So those that are in the congregation, those that are online watching right now, if you don't know Jesus, even if you have accepted Jesus, just repeat this prayer after me and know that when you repeat this prayer, prayer that you are saved right then my husband went through the things that you that what what the world call or what they think um makes you saved but the bible says if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus died and rose again, we shall be saved. He says, if, even if sometimes we don't even have to confess, he said, if you call upon the name of the Lord God Almighty, if you call upon the Lord God Almighty Jesus Christ, that shall be saved. He ain't say you would be, he said you shall be saved. So I'm coming to tell you tonight, all you got to do is open up your mouth tonight and say, Jesus come into my heart. If you all don't mind standing, we're just going to go ready to close out. And those that are in the um, watching via um, online, we thank you via virtual. Just repeat after me. Say, Father God, <clears throat> come into my life. Become my Lord and my Savior. I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I believe that he died. He rose again. And now he's seated at the right hand side of the Father, making intercession for me. Forgive me, Father, of my sin. For it's against you and you only that I have sinned against. In Jesus' name, I welcome you, Holy Spirit. Right now, I declare and confess that I am saved. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. We thank God for each and every one of you all coming out tonight. We don't want to take it for granted. If you all have an offering, you're more than welcome to go ahead and place it in the basket. Those that are online, if you want to bless the ministry, you can do it. Um, even if you're in the audience and you're doing it via cash app, you can do it at dollar sign um, ministry. Um, dollar sign ministry of three R's. <laughs> dollar sign ministry of three R's. So um, that's dollar sign ministry of three R's. So if you are giving via Cash App, if you all have a card, um, you can give um, via, um, the, you can swipe your card also if you um, are giving via card. So we thank God for you all again. It will be on the um, screen. It's dollar sign, and that's M I N I S. 
T-R-O-F, three R-S. That's dollar sign ministry of three R's. So we thank you all for everyone that's blessing the ministry. Like I say, we don't do it to get rich or anything, but all of the funding, it goes toward upbuilding of the kingdom. It goes toward helping the homeless. I just thank God for our prison ministry and our homeless ministry um, where we go out and bless the, the prison each and every month. Um, we bless the inmates and their families. We bless those that are um, homeless. Um, in December, we had a Christmas giveaway where we were able to bless almost 100 homeless veterans um, with um, sleeping bags and goodie bags. So we just thank God for allowing us to be able to be a blessing. So I am super excited. God dropped something in my spirit for us to be able to, with the gas prices rising, to be able to bless those that are in the house um, with gas cards um, for coming out and that might need assistance. We don't know how the Lord's going to move, but if you're in the house when God say bless, that's what we're going to do. So if all hearts and minds are clear, Father, bless the offering right now. We thank you for everyone that gave tonight, whether live or online, God. We thank you right now. We pray for a thousandfold blessing, God. Again, we thank you, God, for opening up the windows of heaven over each and every one of our lives, God. We thank you that you're causing men to give unto our bosoms today. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life because we were obedient to what your word said, God. Thank you, God, for your word again tonight, for it shall not return back to you, boy. So with all hearts and minds clear, let's just go ahead. We dismiss you tonight in the presence of the Lord God Almighty. We thank God for each and every one of you all. We pray the peace of God rest upon you. We plead the blood of Jesus over each and every person that's traveling right now back to their homes that they find things better than they were when they left, God. We thank you for blessing exceeding and abundantly above more than we could ever think or act. Those that might be in need of prayer, we are here. If you need a prayer, you can come to the altar. And if you don't have a church home, this is a good place to make it your home. Um, if you're watching online and you say, well, I want to be a part of your ministry, how do I be a part? You can email us um, at... Uh, minister of the three R's, or you can go to the website. Um, you can message us um, via the ministry page right here on Facebook. This is a good place. And if you gave your life to the Lord tonight, just message me and say, I gave my life to the Lord tonight so that we can know that they are you and we welcome you into the kingdom of the Lord God Almighty. So with all hearts, minds clear, anything else? Anybody else? Anybody need anything? All right. Well, we good tonight. I thank God. See, that's why the devil didn't want that word to come forth. He was defeated. Like I told you, God won. God got the victory. So we give God all the praise. We thank you all for coming out tonight. Thank you all for joining us. And we'll see you all back next Tuesday, 7 p.m. Be in Jacksonville. Be in the house for another mighty word from the Lord God Almighty. So be blessed, everyone. We love you all. Bye-bye.